Recently on Twitter, I meant X, Elon called out the ADL for being, um, the ADL. This caused a hashtag calling for the downfall of this vile organization to trend on Twitter. I meant X. Hold on, who is the ADL? The ADL, or the Anti-Defamation League, is an organization who holds a mission statement to expose and fight against extremists and hate groups, such as the Ku Klux Klan, ISIS, and PewDiePie fans. There's a little bit of a discrepancy between hypothetical and application. But hey, they're identifying alt-right and anti-Semitic dog whistles, such as the swastika, the robe of the Ku Klux Klan, the OK hand gesture, Pepe the Frog, and the number 12. Alright, so maybe nowadays they're a bit of a pathetic joke, but back when they were founded in 1913, they were fighting real hate, like Jim Crow, lynching, and protecting the falsely accused. <laughs> no. Leo Frank was a director of a manufacturing center for the National Pencil Company in Atlanta, Georgia. And by all accounts, Mr. Frank was an upstanding citizen who took a proactive role in community affairs even being elected the head of an Atlanta chapter of... Benibarith. Truly, he was a role model citizen. Well, except for the fact that this guy was a raging pedophile. On April 27th, 1913, Newt Lee, a black night watcher, reported a dead body of a 13-year-old white girl in the basement of the pencil factory. According to police investigators, she was sexually assaulted before being strangled to death with a cloth around her neck. The girl was swiftly identified as Mary Fagan, the daughter of a poor farmer who was employed at the factory. Six prime persons of interest were arrested for the assault and murder of the young girl, all six of which were reported to have been with Mary the day of her ultimate demise. The first person of interest was Arthur Molyneux, a streetcar operator who was reported to be with Mary hours before her death. The second person of interest was Newt Lee, the man who found and reported the body, John Natt, a former employee of the facility, Gordon Bailey, who was an elevator operator, a black man named Jim Conley, who was a janitor for the facility, and Leo Frank himself. The former four were swiftly removed from plausible suspicion due to having airtight alibis. This only left Jim Conley and Leo Frank. According to Jim Conley's testimony, he was at the factory under the orders of Leo Frank himself. Jim would play the role of a watcher, basically a doorman who stayed out of sight. According to Conley, several men and women came in and out of Frank's office, the last one being Mary Fagan. At this point, he was drifting into sleep, but before he fell into a full slumber, he claimed to have heard footsteps leading away from Frank's office and then a scream. Moments later, Frank would barge down in a panicked state, confessing to Jim that he had made advances on her. She pushed him off and then he struck her too hard. Frank ordered Jim to hide the body in the basement and then paid Jim $200, or just over $6,000 in today's money, to not tell anybody about what happened. Oh, Okay, that's pretty bad, but this was just Conley's side of the story. How did Leo Frank refute? According to Frank, he didn't know who Mary Fagan was. All he knew is that she went to his office, he paid her, and then she left, with him leaving around 20 minutes later. Except that last part wasn't true. Another employee who was on duty that weekend claimed that Frank disappeared from the facility not too long after Mary went up to collect her paycheck. So, while an anxious public still awaited answers, the trial would slowly devolve into he said, she said between those who believed Jim Conley was guilty and those who believed Leo Frank was guilty. Unfortunately for Mr. Frank, evidence just continued to stack up against him. Several female employees literally had a Me Too moment exposing their director as a serial pervert who made unwanted sexual advances on them. His alibi of being in his office the entire afternoon was proven false by witness testimony, and his behavior after he left the office was also noted to be strange by several passerbys. One example is him sending calls during his off hours, something he in particular never did. The writing was on the wall for Frank. Ultimately, as a compromise, the courts found both Frank and Conley guilty for the death of Mary Fagan. Jim Conley was sentenced to a year in prison. Leo Frank, on the other hand, was sentenced to death. But by this time, the story of the murder gripped the nation, and Frank's conviction led to considerable unrest within the Jewish community in the North, who believed that the trial was a circus being run by racists. So a bunch of Jewish lawyers in New York came together, creating the ADL. Frank's new defense, now being spearheaded by the newly formed Anti-Defamation League, had a great defense for their client. Jim Conley's a lying All the women who came out against Frank are liars, and everyone in this the only claim made by Frank's new defense that had any substance was that Jim Conley was known for being a pathological liar. Before the trials of Mary Fagan, Jim Conley was already a very well-known name in Southern law books. He was a serial gambler and a drunk. But when he was put into a cross-examination by Luther Rosser, who by the way was someone who thought that black people were quite literally unable to comprehend the idea of written language, stated that Conley's story had few contradictions. And he continued, stating that the few that were there weren't so contradictory to invalidate Conley's testimony. 
The appeals trials turned into more he said, she said moral grandstanding. What the fuck you talking about, Nick? The ADL pushed a narrative of the innocent, upstanding, upper class white man being smeared by the brutish low life Negro. I just want to remind everyone this is the same organization who claimed that PewDiePie was a white supremacist. The courts eventually relented and reduced Frank's sentence. Though, this was a controversial move. So controversial that a riot broke outside of the governor's office, which had to be quelled by the Georgia National Guard. So controversial that in the late hours of August 16th, 1915, an angry mob of 28 armed militiamen raided Mill Edgeville State Penitentiary, overwhelmed the guards, kidnapped Leo Frank, and lynched him the following morning. The trial of Leo Frank in many ways was an unmitigated disaster, not helped by the fact that it turned into a national sensation. But despite this, there are still a lot of open questions, such as, even once Leo Frank was proven 102% guilty, why were the ADL so adamant that Leo Frank was innocent? Officially, the ADL was created to defend Jewish individuals from rampant anti-Semitism, but when you look into the case, you realize that wasn't an issue. To most people in Georgia, Leo Frank was a wolf in sheep's clothing, an upstanding white man of high society who did the unthinkable, and for public opinion to be so against him meant that he must have been extremely guilty. Remember, the people who were investigating this case were 20th century American police. People who care a lot more about their own public perception than actually doing a good job. So locking someone up like Jim Conley, who was seen as a degenerate negro who had a gambling addiction and a criminal record longer than the Bible, would have been easy pickings for the Atlanta PD. So if it wasn't the anti-Semitism, what was the real reason for the ADL so adamantly defending Frank? As mentioned earlier in the video, Frank was original president for a major Jewish organization in America. Having him be exposed as a sexual harasser slash pedophile would look really bad. So personally, I believe that the ADL only defended Frank to save the reputation of the Jewish organization, not because they actually believed he was innocent. Yeah, we only fucking did it. In the end, though, the Georgia Board of Pardons and Paroles would pardon Frank in late 1986, being a huge win for the ADL, who still paraded Frank's corpse as if they were Hamas parading around dead Israelis. But there was a massive caveat. Frank was still guilty of the rape and murder. He was only pardoned because he was lynched. That's probably a part of the ADL want to keep secret. Today, the ADL and other major organizations connected to it claim that Jim Conley raped and murdered Mary Fagan. The descendants of Mary Fagan's relatives, on the other hand, believe that Leo Frank is guilty. Jim Conley himself continued to have run-ins with the law, and died in custody either in 1942 or 1962. I've seen both dates. Though, despite their rocky start since, the ADL has gone on to do great things, such as defend the Waukesha Parade Killer, write six separate articles on Gamergate, some as recent as February of this year, claiming that all the pro-Palestine protests in America are being done by neo-Nazi organizations, and claiming that PewDiePie is a white- Oh yeah, this case was the sole reason why the Georgian chapter of the Ku Klux Klan was reassembled following their dissolution in the late 1870s. This has been Mr. Asian Pie. See you on the flip, and don't be stupid.